Ooh, that's deep. Okay, let's let's go into that a little bit before we move move on. The media aspect of how how <clears throat> powerful the media is, colors you know spread across the the not just the country, the world. I mean, they have gang banging in Belize and the Philippines, and and a lot of it was from the, the movie Colors. Things like banging on wax, the uh, the the Crip and Blood album. That also, my friend from North Carolina told me when that came out, everybody suddenly was you know Crip and Pyru. Um, Man, that's so interesting that you said that about the movie Colors. Take yourself back to that, and and why do you think were you? What's the word I'm looking for? Why do you think you were so vulnerable to where that movie, um, that movie uh, caught your attention and made you want to be that? And and how and and then talk about how powerful media is to these kids even today. Colors made me feel like what was happening outside was important. It was important enough to make a movie about a really good movie in my opinion at the time. You know what I mean? I was like, man, this is something to this that people in Hollywood, white people, would actually pay money to for somebody to write this story and present this to the world. It's gotta be something to it. You know? And that just fascinated with me. Fascinated me, you know? And uh when I think about the music that was out there it was all about what was going on, what the real, it was reality. It wasn't what I hear today, you know, kids talking about, you know, whatever they're talking about, you know, that music back then banging on wax, that was, that was real gang members talking about gang activity. Like these were dudes that I knew I used to see when I used to go around to those neighborhoods and they out there like that, banged out, red bandanas, Red Chuck, you know, khaki, out there posting. You know what I mean? They they really rapping about their life. You know what I mean? And so it was like, man, this stuff is real. It's so real that it's marketable and people aren't buying it. That's something that I can be a part of. Ah, fatal mistake on my part. Young and naive. Damn. That's, uh, yeah, that's amazing that movies like Colors and, and Banging on Wax, uh, you know, contributed to, to your lifestyle back then in such a, uh, a big way. What, um, how old were you when you got jumped in? 13. 13. I was 13 years old. This was a few days, few days after my birthday. Uh, yeah, it was right on the heels of the L.A. uprising in 92, man. I remember it like it was yesterday. It's in the hood. Hey, I don't know uh, what you did, but um, your, your, voice, your voice got a little muffly for a minute, for like 30 seconds. Yes. Oh, so you good now? You good. It was, uh, the month, it, it was the month of May, uh, right on the heels of the L.A. uprising in 92, the L.A. riots, uh, in the hood, uh, with my homeboys, and uh, it, it was time. It was time. 13. Beforehand, what was what was a young Ali doing, you know, 11, you know, 10, 11, 12? Were you hanging around the gang? Were you contributing to activities and things like that? I mean, we were junior gang members before we were ever in the gang. I mean, all of us are together. We go everywhere together. When people ask us where we're from, we say we're from the Pueblos, from the project. We go to Huntington Park to the California Three, running across kids from other neighborhoods. We go to Roosevelt Park. We go to Ross Snyder's Park. We go downtown. Everywhere we go, we go together. You know what I mean? And most of the time, we're doing criminal activity as kids, stealing mostly, vandalism, that sort of thing. That's all gang activity, even though we're not going around saying we're bloods. You know what I mean? This is 11, 12 years old, you know? And... When we're in the neighborhood, we're around the actual gang members. These are my friends, older brothers, fathers, uncles, aunties, mamas, and everybody else. Yeah, uh, gangs in the projects are something different, man. It's more of a, uh, m- most people are related over there through blood or through marriage, so it's like a family type ordeal. And it's just clans, different clans. This group of people are related, that group of people are related, that group of people are related. You know what I mean? And all of them are in the same game. So it's like, we don't even look at them like, it's not like an outside feeling. It's an inside feeling. Like, you know, I know him. I know her. I know, that's his mama. That's her auntie. That's, 
you know, it's like, wow, you don't really think of it like I'm joining, uh, uh, I'm going somewhere and joining an entity that I know little about. It's like, shit, I'm joining my friends and family and everybody else. The hood, this is where I'm from, this is where I'm at. Okay. Take me back to the day you got jumped in. What were you going through mentally? What was going on in your head? Were you ready? Was you like, it's about time, let's do this? Or were you scared? What, what, what were you going on? What was going on in your head? I mean, there was a party that night. And so I went with my homeboy, Lil Ben, uh, to the party. I threw on my red bomber jacket and a red pea hat. And uh, when we pulled up to the party, most of the kids from our group, we're in the parking lot hanging out with a group of kids that were a little bit older than us, uh, late teens, early 20s. And uh, one kid in particular uh, started sweating me, uh, my homeboy Lil Nut. And uh, he didn't recognize me. He was churned out, you know, smoking PCP and drinking and, and having a good time. And he started, uh, started messing with me. He wanted to take my hat from me. He tried to slick one. He was like, let me just wear it. And I'm saying, no, I'm not going to let you wear it because he's going he gonna to keep it. You know, he's a bigger kid, a tough kid. Uh, he's already fighting with grown men. At the time, he couldn't have been no more than 16, you know? So I'm saying, nah. And uh, I threw my hands up on him. And he started laughing like, man, I'll beat your little ass. And everybody like, you know, nah, he's doing what he's supposed to do. You know what I mean? He ain't supposed to let you take his ass. So he started questioning me about, where I'm from, do I want to be from the gang and all of these type of things. And I basically told him, no, nah, man, I'm from right here. I'm from this project, but I don't want to be no blood. I don't want to be no gang member. You know what I mean? Not in those words, but that's what I'm getting to. And so he kind of like brushed me off. And my little crew, my little friends, they're saying like, you know, don't even worry about that. You already from the hood. You ain't got to do nothing. You from this already. And so once that thought crossed my mind, I was like, yeah, Right. So what was the point of what he was trying to do? Like ribbing me and all that. He said, they said, he just wanted to see if you would get down, if you would fight. They want to see you fight. And then once I got that in my mind that it wasn't about being treated like an outsider, they just wanted to see if I had heart. That's when I agreed to fight. They said, okay, well, we're going to let you pick your fate. So me and one of my little friends, uh, Pete Jungle, uh, we went out there, we got in the street. They cleared the whole party out. Everybody came out to 54, uh, made a boxing ring of the street. And uh, we went out there and we locked up. We fought for 52 seconds, the longest 52 seconds of my life. When it was over, Lil Nut and the rest of them, they embraced me. Uh, they poured beer down my mouth, tried to get the swelling down from my face. And my older homeboy, Fat Man, he told me, he said, you got to be your own man over here, man. Get you a name, but be your own man. I never forgot that. And that was the beginning of the end for me. Mm. 